is the Earth actually flat? Ever since the ancient Greeks began their equations Pixels. more than 2,000 years ago, the overwhelming consensus has slowly shifted to the viewpoint that the Earth is a sphere. Alternate theories of Earth's shape have sprung Donut up in the Earth. center, but none of them more Mario than Earth. flat Earth. A theory that <laughs> suggests that NASA, world governments, airlines, and basically anyone in the field of navigation have been lying to us about the shape of the planet for the last few decades. Okay, I've said this once and I've said this a million times, okay? If you are anti or pro something, you should be able to argue for both sides, okay? So I'll give an example. If you are adamant that the Earth is a sphere, you should be able to argue why it's a sphere, why there's proof it's a sphere, and basically be able to argue with that point. But you should also be able to argue for the other side. You need to understand both sides, both evidence from both sides to make a calculation. Now, don't get me wrong, flat Earth seems kind of a absurd seems kind of silly and for the most part it kind of is but here's the part that gets me okay so let's just say the earth is flat and the borders of the earth see this sphere here you either fall off it or it's an ice field that surrounds the world or whatever and no one's ever gone beyond it we have planes right now i understand we could fake photography from satellites i get that can be possible photoshop is an amazing tool however surely someone has gone up on a hot air balloon or a rocket on the corners of the planet someone who is skeptical that the earth is a sphere and be able to see what the edge of the earth looks like because there's no images of that why is there no images surely we'll be able to get an idea of what the end of the earth should look like and therefore prove that flat earth is actually flat is it true has modern technology failed us oh god or are scientists hiding the truth is there a massive dome covering Gifts. the planet did the notorious big know something we didn't Modern flat earth societies worldwide have been asking similar questions for quite some time, and governments are terrified with the progress they're making. Their main beliefs are the following. The earth is flat, under a dome, and surrounded by a giant wall of ice. Okay, so let's go down this path then. So let's say it's a dome, okay? So surely we should be able to find the border of the dome and prove its existence by showing it, right? And if there's a massive ice wall, surely we'll be able to find these ice walls, right? And be able to maybe pop over the top of them and have a little look. We have the technology to do this. Are people who are flat earthers basically denying that these technology even exists? Some believe that space is a complete lie, crafted by a man on Photoshop. The sun and the moon are two small lights hovering over the earth within the dome. Gravity isn't a thing. Big news, folks. And that the entirety <laughs> of Australia doesn't actually exist. Frank, baby. All of this because they can't see a curve on the horizon. Their arguments are strong, and they're only getting stronger. As in the last few years, they've assembled a crack team of scientists solely devoted to finding evidence for their theory. They're not quite there yet, but they're getting damn close. Alongside the research division, there are the Flat Earth Conventions, where the most educated flat earth conspiracy theorists gather to hold intelligent and profound discussions on what's really going on in the shadows. And through the global reach of the internet, flat earth has spread far and wide, even to the point where people are actually building entire communities around the theory. Flat earth music, flat earth merchandise, even flat earth dating sites. <laughs> Naturally, the whole thing has also led to a lot of memes and trolling. All right, guys, I'm looking after you guys, all right? I want to make sure that your love life has the maximum potential to succeed in your lifetime, okay? Because I don't want you guys to die alone, all right? So hear me out, all right? Here's a pro tip for you. Whether it's the first date, the second date, or even the 10th date, please don't bring up your extreme political beliefs, <laughs> map games, or flat earth theories. Please, please don't do that. I know you believe deeply in these things. Please, guys, please, please have normie conversations on dates. Talk about the weather. Talk about clothing talk about fashion talk about pop culture and things that you love and you enjoy on television please don't talk about flat earth or map games or how <laughs> hitler could have won world war ii <laughs> dover the united kingdom the 1950s there's a guy in town called samuel shenton oh and god he changed my mind flat. after creating his own cosmology <laughs> he sets up the international flat earth research society in 1956 and starts spreading the word <laughs> A flat, br flat brain theory. I like that. How do we prove the flat brain theory? How do we prove it? That was until the internet came around. A digital revolution. Arguably the most monumental piece of technology ever invented. Anyone with a laptop could shoot a video, upload it, and have it streamed directly onto someone else's computer. It didn't matter how ill-researched what you were saying was. As long as it made for a good 30-minute watch before bed, you were golden. And so, early YouTube was massive for spreading some of the more far-reaching conspiracy theories, and YouTube's algorithm actually pushed you towards them. It was in this climate that the Flat Earth Society relaunched online in 2009, 
And from there, it wasn't long before flat earth videos started to circulate on this conspiracy driven YouTube. Be real here, this theory never really got very far until the internet was around. The internet has opened so many opportunities to spread interesting ideas where prior to that, it was uh, a lot more difficult. You know, like if you're standing on a street corner on a soapbox with a megaphone, you're not reaching very many people, are you? Maybe putting a little seed in their brain, an idea. But think about it with the internet, you can broadcast to millions, no billions of people simultaneously. It is uh, the game changer. A few kinds of people. First, there are the people who believe that the few lines in the Bible alluding to a flat earth should be taken literally. Hang on a second. In the Bible, it references flat earth. What? He has a fixed earth firm immovable thou hast fixed the earth immovable and firm thou hast fixed the earth on its foundations so it can never be shaken who made the earth and fashioned it and himself fixed it fast the problem with the bible <laughs> famous arguments conversation star the problem with the bible is that it's been translated too many times and now a lot of the original lines in the bible i feel like they're just gobbledygooked because the mistranslations have led to a lot of i don't know it's it feels like sometimes when you read the Bible, it's so difficult to read because in most cases it has been translated so many times. And although they're all under the same flag, they don't all agree with each other. For instance, not everyone believes in the dome. Some believe that the planet just keeps going on forever. <laughs> Some also believe that the Earth is motionless. It's Minecraft, bro, bros. It's Minecraft. Unlimited amount of blocks. Just keeps going. While others believe it's constantly moving upwards. So as well as the arguments with globetards, there's also quite a lot of bickering with each other. The society has also had some critics, most notably astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, alongside pretty much every other scientist on the planet. But it didn't matter. The Flat Earthers had B.O.B., a rapper that no one had heard about in around 10 years. Inevitably, an online dispute between deGrasse Tyson and B.O.B. sprung up in early 2016. It started out with a few tweets. DeGrasse Tyson sees what B.O.B. is posting on Twitter and immediately steps in the ring. The following back and forth on Twitter starts out relatively level-headed, but it doesn't stay that way for long. The very next day, B.O.B. drops a flat earth disc track on Neil DeGrasse Tyson, <laughs> instantly proving all of his points wrong. Oh God. Neil swings back with a diss track of his own. Neil deGrasse Tyson made a diss track? What? Flat earth is a problem only when people in charge think that <laughs> So potentially millions of people have been roped into the viewpoint that the Earth's flat. But what are their actual arguments? There are a few different versions, but they all share the same fundamental aspects. They're flat and surrounded by a wall of ice. Here are the problems with that. To get to this model, they've had to stretch countries out, literally to the point where they're actually no longer proportional. Also, when put into practice, countries on this map are much farther apart than they are in reality. For instance, here is a direct flight from Sydney, Australia to San Francisco. Oh, I remember Chile, this. Approximately a 7,000 mile journey. QF27 is a 12 hour flight. However, if the world looks like this, you're looking at a distance of around 17,000 miles. And that's going to take a lot longer than 12 hours. In fact, the plane would have to travel at almost twice the speed of sound. <laughs> that Earth is response to this? The flights don't exist. The airlines are in on it, and the flights are simply unable to be booked or always cancelled a few days before. The multiple videos of people getting on these flights on YouTube are yet to be addressed. Now let's take a look at who's actually in on it. Turns out, it's a lot of people. Anyone with a reasonable knowledge of circumnavigation, governments worldwide, scientists worldwide, NASA, and the United Nations. It's even in their logo. And all of NASA's footage? CGI. In fact, Flat Earth is reckoned that NASA was actually created to hide the real shape of the Earth in the first place, and is spending billions of dollars a year all in an effort to cloak the fact that we're living under a dome. Okay, so how do they explain ships disappearing over the horizon bottom first? Heat. If the Sun and the Moon look like this, how come solar eclipses exist? It's a shadow object that orbits the Sun. Okay, their arguments are convincing. But some members of the Flat Earth Society still weren't content, so they thought they'd conduct some research. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, God, here we go. It's 2017, and Flat Earther Mike Hughes looks up to the sky. He doesn't believe the lies, and wants to see the so-called curvature of the Earth with his very own eyes. So he plans to build a homemade rocket to do so. Oh, no, I heard about this guy in the news. Ah, oh, it just doesn't have a good ending. He soars almost 2,000 feet into the sky, before coming back down to Earth. 
A successful launch, but not quite high enough to see the curvature of the planet. For that, he would have needed to reach a height of 35,000 feet. Flat Earth? Not proven. A uh, serious question is, why does he have to man the rocket? Why, why can't it just be like a drone and it just has cameras on it? Why does he need to be in the rocket? Oh my god. Oh, uh, you know how this is going to end. If Hughes had actually wanted to see the curvature of the Earth, all he had to do was fork out $200 for a ride on a commercial airline, which generally reaches at least 30,000 feet. That's a lot cheaper than building a $20,000 makeshift rocket. It also turns out that Hughes is actually a daredevil and has been launching rockets for quite some time. So in the chat just said cameras have lenses and they are shaped so they, they show a curve. Dude, think about what you just said there. Think about what you just said. Our eyes, our lenses. Bro, bro, bro. After suddenly declaring himself a flat earther in 2017, Hughes managed to crowdfund almost $10,000. So I don't think it's reaching to say that Mike Hughes actually just used Flat Earth as a means to fund his rocket career. <laughs> Tragically, Mike Hughes passed away early this year, after an early deployment of a parachute during his latest rocket launch. I read about that in the news. I feel like people like him are so confident with their abilities. That's the reason why they're able to make jokes like that. You know what I mean? That's why they're able to make mistakes like that, you know? Like the fact he didn't think to have a backup parachute. Oh, God. Well, he did what he loved anyway. He was a rocket man. Earth is decided Actual to rocket man. Theory. One of them spends $20,000 on a ring laser gyroscope, a device that they can use to measure the rotation of the planet. They then leave it up for an hour. It measures 15 degrees. That measurement didn't count, of course, because the gyroscope was supposedly picking <laughs> up heavenly energies from the sky. <laughs> so they then put it in a zero gorse chamber. They wait one hour. Still 15 degrees. 15 degrees. That's Earth. <laughs> Still not proven. Yay, guys, we proved the Earth is a sphere. We did it. Wait, wait, hang on. No, we weren't proving it's a sphere. We're proving it's flat. <laughs> oh, God. Time to go a bit cheaper. This experiment would require only three boards and a 3,000 milliwatt laser. <laughs> the basic idea was that they'd have three boards placed evenly along a 3.88 mile stretch through the Victoria Canal. They'd then shoot the laser from one end to the other and then track where it passed on each board. And if it was at the same point across all three, the Earth was flat. But if the laser passed a lower point on the middle post, the Earth was round. However, when they actually tested it out, the laser beam had expanded over the canal and shone onto the entire final board, making it impossible to tell what point it was hitting. Another failure. Alright boys, one final test. This was basically another attempt at the last test, but with a few key differences. This one involved only two boards, a camera and a flashlight. They cut out holes 14 feet up the boards, then posted them along the same stretch of the canal. If the camera on the other end of the flashlight picked up any lights through the holes, the earth was flat. But if the camera picked up no light, the earth was round. The camera didn't pick up any light. <laughs> so, so far, not much has worked out. However, oh, the Flat no. Earth Society are currently setting up plans for a flat earth cruise, set to sail to the Great Ice Wall within the next two years where the Flat Earthers will finally be able to gaze upon the Great Barrier keeping us all caged in with their very own eyes. <laughs> what they'll say when they realise it's not actually a wall, nobody can say. But for now, the Earth is undeniably flat to potentially millions of people. Isn't it the easiest test possible to basically just get on a ship and sail in one direction? I suppose they would argue then that you're actively sailing in circles and avoiding the ice wall on the end. I think when it comes down to it, I think believing the theory is more fun than believing the truth. And I think that's what these people have going on for them. There's people who aren't very bright and maybe they're lonely and they're desperate and they want to cling on to this crazy theory that makes them feel special because they know something no one else knows. And then there's the people who are the charlatans who are selling this idea, that are selling books, shooting rockets and cruisers and doing these stupid scientific experiments. So there's the arseholes making money from it and then there's the vulnerable people gullible to it. And at the end of the day, everyone's losing, aren't they? That's really sad. Damn, that was Dave's final thought. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You love this video? Well, this one, you're going to love even more.